This skill is designed to evaluate your ability to provide spinal immobilization to a supine patient using a long spine immobilization device. You arrive on the scene with an EMT assistant. The assistant EMT has completed the scene survey as well as the primary assessment and no critical condition requiring any intervention was found. For the purposes of this evaluation, the simulated patient's vital signs remain stable. You are required to treat the specific, isolated problem of a suspected, unstable spine using a long spine immobilization device. When moving the simulated patient to the device, you should use the help of the assistant EMT and me. The assistant EMT should control the head and cervical spine of the simulated patient while you and I move the simulated patient to the immobilization device. You are responsible for the direction and subsequent actions of the EMT assistant and me. You may use any equipment available in this room. You have 10 minutes to complete this procedure. Do you have any questions? In this station, you have the responsibility of completely immobilizing your patient to a long spine board using a C-collar. In this station, the patient has already been assessed, so your task is simply the immobilization. Before you begin this skill, I recommend that you observe the type of spine board that you're using, especially paying attention to the type of straps that are used on that spine board. If you're not familiar with the straps, if you need to readjust the straps to better suit the way you're accustomed to uh, immobilizing a patient, then you can do so at that time. You can also use the evaluator's help to be able to get those things done. It's no different than reporting to the ambulance to go to work every morning, checking off your equipment, making sure that the equipment is um, ready to be used in a fashion that you are accustomed to using. it. This patient has already been assessed by the EMTs on the scene. So I have an imaginary partner holding C-spine, and then I have another partner that is available for uh, use in whatever fashion that I, I, I need. So as I approach the patient, of course, with my gloves on, making sure that the scene is safe, um, my patient will be conscious. Sir, how are you doing today? I understand you're not feeling well, uh, fell off a house, fell off a horse, got run over by a truck, whatever the situation may be, we want to make sure that we talk with our patients so they feel comfortable with us that we know what we're doing. So I'll address my patient um, as such, uh, sir, uh, my name is Jim. Uh, need to check a few things, get you on the spine board so that we can get you to the hospital and get you feeling a little bit better. I need for you to squeeze my hands because we need to assess the motor and neuro function of our patient. I'll check for pulses bilaterally. I'll do the same thing at feet. Sir, can you push against my hand? Can you pull up against my hand? And I'll check my dorsalis pedis pulses bilaterally, and I would mark those for our family so that it'd be easy to come back and find them a little bit later on. So now that we've made sure that our neuromotor impulses are intact, uh, we want to measure and apply this appropriately sized C collar. So in this station, you will be required to apply the C collar appropriately measured. So we do have that transfer over. It does uh, fit appropriately. My partner's holding C spine control. We get the C, uh, C collar in place and secure it snugly. All right, so I know it's not comfortable, and we get this thing off there when we get to the hospital just as soon as we can. So now that I've got my patient assessed, as far as my motor neuro, I have my C collar in place. I'll get my spine board brought to me uh, so that it's close by. I recommend that you get that done at the beginning of the scenario so that you don't have to get up and walk around and find it and get everything together. All right, sir, this will take just a minute. We'll get everything hooked up here and get you taken care of. Utilizing our partners, uh, we're going to log roll our patient towards us on the headbands count, hand on the shoulder, hand on the hips, and as our partners count, we'll roll our patient to us. Headband counts one, two, three. We'll bring them up. Or up. Of course, we're not going to move our hand that's on the shoulder. That stabilizes the patient. We'll assess down the back of the patient to make sure nothing has been missed. We'll bring our spine board over to us. One of the difficult things here is making sure that you don't get your straps tangled up under the board so that you have trouble getting them back out. 
On our head mesh count, we're going to log roll our patient easily back over to the board. Head mesh count, one, two, three. If our patient does not fit directly to the center of the board, or is not high enough up, or is too far down, whatever the case may be, we'll need to do a slide to move our patient up. No lateral movement. All right, so we're gonna slide up a little bit on our head mesh count. Our head mesh counts one, two, three, and we'll move our patient up to the board to the right location in the center of the board. At this time, we're going to strap our patient, starting with the torso. Bring them down snug. Again, bring them down snug. Across the waist. If our patient is conscious, we can ask them do they want their hands secured so they don't have to hold their arms up. If they were unconscious, we would go ahead and lock the arms down so that they don't fall and have any problems getting tangled up. Secure it down tightly. Then the legs. Legs are secured. Torso is secured. At this time, we can pad any voids that we may see using any blankets or sheets that we may have. Padding those voids. Now we'll take and we'll apply the head locks. Head man is still holding C-spine. One block in place. The other block in place. Secure the top head strap. Cross the patient's forehead and the blocks. We we'll use the strap, which is a, a um, a tape type of product to secure the C collar to the spine board. Once that is in place, we want to go and reassess our patient to make sure we haven't caused any issues with neuromotor circulation. Sir, I know you're not comfortable, but we're going to get this thing taken care of. All right, pulses are still present. Pulses are still present. Sir, squeeze my hands for me one more time. All right, that's good. Check for my distal pulses is present. Distal pulse present. Push against my hands. Now pull up against my hands. All right, we're good. At this time, my uh, head man has uh, released the spine control. I'll use my help to uh, pick up the stretcher, place it on the stretcher, and then move the patient to the ambulance.